what is the worst form of torture not safe for work? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The rat torture is honestly one of the most terrifying things I've ever heard about. So they basically starved a couple of rats, put them in a bucket, and then tie said bucket on the belly of a person they were about to torture. They would then heat the bucket, which basically meant the rats could only escape by eating through the victim's flesh. Visited the Tower of London and read about a guy who was hanged from the ceiling by one of his fingers until it eventually got pulled off after a couple of days. That sounded pretty bad, but I imagine there is much worse. Torture versus Sadistic Execution There's one where they would place people in cages over a patch of bamboo. Certain species of bamboo grow quite quickly. Certain species of bamboo can grow 910 millimeters, 36 inches, within a 24-hour period, at a rate of almost 40 millimeters, 1.5 inches an hour, a growth around 1 millimeter every 90 seconds, or 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters, every 40 minutes. The idea is that the bamboo will grow through the person because they're pinned in the cage. There was a TIL about this a while back, but the Thailand chicken coop prison. Inmates were placed in a cell under a chicken coop with the droppings falling in on them in their cell with no escape. Everyone commenting said that would be the most disgusting thing and the worst smell. Psychological. Physical pain is one thing. Locked in a hole for 1,000 plus days, you will go completely insane. I remember this one show, forgot the name, where the woman was immortal so they locked her up in a cage-like figure and dumped her in the ocean to drown for infinity. Just imagine drowning, only to wake up drowning again for centuries. I feel like being buried in sand on the beach with just your head sticking out waiting for the tide to come in would be horrible. Yes, 100% there are more painful tortures, but waiting to slowly drown sounds really horrifying to me. I believe it was called Pythagoras' horse. It's this metal triangle-like object where the person being tortured is sat on the pointy side and left there while their feet are weighted down by a heavy object. Scathism. Basically, they encapsulate you between two boats with only your hands, feet, and head sticking out. Then they float you in a swamp and force feed you a mix of milk and honey over the next few days. For starters, the sweet mess on your face attracts flies and mosquitoes, so your face is crawling with them the entire time. Next, the laxative diet means you shit yourself a lot, which attracts more insects and parasites that breed like mad inside the boats and worse, inside you. Your body will be a painful, itchy, bug-infested, septic corpse for days before you die. The Execution of Balthasar Gerard At his trial, Gerard was sentenced to be tortured and then executed in a manner considered brutal by the standards at the time. The magistrates decreed that the right hand of Gerard should be burned off with a red-hot iron, that his flesh should be torn from his bones with pincers in six different places, that he should be quartered and disemboweled alive, his heart torn from his bosom and flung in his face, and that, finally, his head should be taken off. Gerard's torture was extraordinarily brutal. On the first night of his imprisonment, Gerard was hung on a pole and lashed with a whip. Next, his wounds were smeared with honey, and a goat was brought to lick the honey off his skin with its rough tongue. The goat, however, refused to touch his body. After several other forms of torture, he was left to pass the night with his hands and feet bound together like a ball so sleep would be difficult. During the following three days, he was repeatedly mocked and hung on a pole with his hands tied behind his back. Then a weight of 300 metric pounds, 150 kilograms, was attached to each of his big toes for half an hour. Subsequently, Gerard was fitted with shoes made of well-oiled, uncured dog skin. The shoes were two fingers shorter than his feet. In this state, he was put before a fire. When the shoes warmed up, they contracted, crushing the feet inside them to stumps. When the shoes were removed, his half-broiled skin was torn off. After his feet were damaged, his armpits were branded. He was then dressed in a shirt soaked in alcohol. Lastly, burning bacon fat was poured over him and sharp nails were stuck between the flesh and the nails of his hands and feet. On the 14th of July, Four days after the assassination, the sentence declared at the trial was carried out 
and Grodd was tortured and executed in the market square of Delft. His severed head was then displayed on a pike behind Prinzenhof, and his arms and legs displayed on four gates of the city. But what did he do? Death by paper cuts. Inflicting a small puncture all over the body until the body seizes. Your body won't allow you to pass out, but you'll eventually bleed out. Ling Chi, otherwise known as Death by 1000 Cuts, was a form of torture used by the Chinese until 1905. Basically, what they would do is take knives and start whittling away at your body with sharp knives, taking it slow and starting with the least vital parts and working their way up, making sure that your death is long and agonizing. I've heard that it is the most painful thing anyone has had to endure in the history of mankind. Crucifixion, no doubt. Forced to stand up for days at a time nailed to a cross. You're so tired that you collapse, but then you start to hang and die from asphyxiation until your survival instincts kick in and you end up standing up, only to go restart this horrible cycle until either one kills you. Romans found a way to kill people over the space of days by turning their own will to live against them. Didn't even need a torturer, just a cross and some nails. Brazen Bull you're alive, and you get stuck to Bronze Bull, and you can't move that much, and you feel how the bottom is getting hotter every second. Fun. Orgasm torture. Not fun. Any situation where you see a loved one deteriorate, especially in my opinion from something that they cannot mitigate, like dementia, Alzheimer's, ALS, muscular dystrophy, cancer, etc., etc. I don't know if it's true, but the CIA experimented with this liquid called perfluorohexane. It's a liquid that is capable of letting you breathe because of how well spread the oxygen and carbon molecules are. The experiment was, was when they needed a prisoner to talk, they'd take them into this tank full of it, and it would be pitch black. Logical reaction to being submerged into a liquid is to start holding your breath. The prisoner would pass out then reawaken breathing normally, but still in this liquid. It was meant to mentally and psychologically mess with them. Again, I don't know if this is true or not. However, if it were, pretty messed up torture technique. I forgot what it was called, Chinese water torture, where you are tied down and drops of water are dripped periodically and you slowly start to go insane. They keep you awake and stuff, or anything that messes with your head and you want to end your life yourself but can't. The brutal, prolonged torture inflicted by the Japanese on POWs in World War II. On 26 January 1945, John Haberfield, an FAA Hellcat pilot on HMS Indomitable, was shot down during an attack on the oil refineries in Palemburg, Sumatra. He was captured by the Japanese and handed over to the Kempeitai, the Japanese Gestapo, who didn't regard pilots as POWs but as war criminals. Haberfeld was denied food and water during his interrogation and was beaten and placed on public display for humiliation and to be photographed. He was eventually sent to the notorious Outram Road Gaul in Singapore, where his condition deteriorated due to his wounds and lack of food. In all, there were nine fleet air arm pilots in the Gaul, and if they'd hoped to be released to a POW camp where chances of survival were marginally better, they were sadly mistaken. For the remainder of their lives, the prisoners were held in solitary confinement, six months of slow starvation and regular beatings. During July and August 1945, the ill treatment intensified and they were used as bargaining chips, threatened with slaughter if the Allies set foot on Japanese soil. Following surrender on 15 August, the Japanese High Command sent word that any prisoners treated unkindly who lived to bear witness to this cruelty should be eliminated. So, without trial and without mercy, Haberfield and the other eight prisoners were taken down to the beach and beheaded. Major Kataoki was responsible for their deaths. He had this to say about it. After interrogating them, I was not able to decide whether to put them in a POW camp here or send them to the Japanese main island. I could not help despising them for what they were. Under such circumstances, I decided to personally execute the nine men. After office hours, I drove a lorry myself and went to the jail with the above mentioned. We took out the nine prisoners, brought them to the beach at the northern end of the Shanghai area, 
and executed them with swords on the beach. The bodies were then put in a boat prepared beforehand and sunk in the sea with weights attached to them. It is impossible to imagine the thoughts of these young men as they waited such cold-blooded execution, starved and brutalized over many months, kept in solitary confinement without contact and support. They must have lost all hope and been in despair. Even the means of the deaths was chosen to terrorize and torture, decapitated one by one, the sound and smell invading their consciousness, no escape and no compassion. When Allied intelligence officers belatedly arrived to investigate rumors of atrocities at the jail, Major Kataoki told them the airmen had been sent to the mainland. He then fled and escaped the justice he deserved. His commanding officer, however, was captured and put on trial for his part in the torture and execution, but committed suicide before the trial. Got in an ATV accident where my chin was cut open to the bone, around 5 inches across my face. Rushed to the hospital, they have to numb the area. This process involves a large needle very, very slowly being scraped across the exposed bone. Since this is what is done to cause the numbness, I felt everything. Everything. This is the worst torture I could ever imagine for someone. An exposed bone in your face that you can hear and feel because exposed nerve endings around ripped skin being scraped. Imagine a black chalkboard and long fingernails, but inside your face. It was unlike any pain I've ever experienced in my life, and to this day, I have an irrational fear of needles. Sight or sound, I get chills. A sensory deprivation chamber built inside an anechoic chamber. All of your five senses completely muted. You don't torture someone with pain. After long enough, the pain becomes part of the daily routine. You torture someone by taking away all the familiar things. I can think of no experience that would achieve this result and be the most alien feeling experience of your life. Being trapped in a biochemical illusion, it's literally being tortured by nothing but an imbalance in your brain coloring all the external stimulus around you. You can't see the world for the world pulled over your eyes and make choices based on incorrect data over and over and over and there's no way out of the loop. Even self-awareness can't save you or medication. It makes you aware. It subdues the static and lies, but you never are free from questioning if every feeling is real, if bad people are bad, if your gut is right, if good people are actually good, and if your fear, paranoia, excitement, or even passion is just a biochemical imbalance in your brain. That's torture can't decide between two. One was used in Africa where victims would have their eyelids cut out and tied on a desert ground facing up. They would then be forced to look in the sky as the sun is going up and making them blind. They would be left there to die either of thirst and starvation or eaten by desert animals. Other one is when victims were tied up to a chair in a position in which they couldn't even move their head. They would have drops of water dripping on the same spot on the top of their head. After days of this torture, a hole would form on the spot and water would keep penetrating their skull all the way to their brain one drop at a time.